Lesson 8.6 Relate Fractions and Whole Numbers A fraction can represent an amount less than one, one whole, or more than one whole. Here we have three-fourths. The three is our numerator. The four is our denominator. The numerator tells us how many parts we are counting or how many parts are shaded. The denominator tells us how many equal parts each whole is split into. For a fraction that's less than one, like five-eighths, the numerator is less than the denominator. Five is less than eight. For a fraction equal to one, the numerator and denominator are the same number. We have it split into five parts, and we have all five parts. We have one whole. For a fraction that's greater than one, the numerator is greater than the denominator. Five is greater than four, so that's a fraction greater than one. Here we have two identical pizzas. This one's cut into fourths, and we have four fourths. This same pizza is cut into eighths, so we have eight eighths. A whole can be divided into any number of equal parts. As long as all the parts are there, it will equal one whole. We have all four parts, nobody's eaten any, so we have four fourths, and all the parts are here. It's a whole pizza, just like that's a whole pizza. If two numbers are located at the same point on a number line, then they are equal and represent the same distance from zero. Here we have zero, and we've got four-fourths, which is also one. Four-fourths is at the same point as one on the number line, so they represent the same distance from zero, and they're equal to each other. We can complete the number line then locate and draw the points for four-eighths, eight-eighths, and one. So we look at the numbers on the bottom here for the scale, and here's zero, that's zero-eighths, and we can see it's an eighths because that's what the denominator is. It tells us it's split into eight equal parts. If we're at zero, we have zero-eighths. We don't have any. Here we're at one-eighth, two-eighths, and we need to fill in these. Do you know what's missing here? It goes one, two, and then that would be three-eighths. Then we'd have four-eighths, then five-eighths, then six-eighths, seven-eighths, and eight-eighths. And we can locate and draw the points for four-eighths. That's right here. And eight-eighths and one is over here. 8 eighths is equal to 1. So we only have two points drawn on the line for these three numbers because 8 eighths and 1 are the same point. So if two numbers are located at the same point on a number line, they're equal and represent the same distance from 0. A numerator tells us how many parts are counted, or how many are shaded, and the denominator tells us how many equal parts one whole thing is divided into. We have a whole circle, and it's in four parts. It's divided into four parts, so our denominator is a four. We have all four parts of the four, so we have four-fourths. We have one whole circle. Here, it's divided into fourths, and we can see our denominator is a four. But look, we have one, two, three, four, five parts. That's five-fourths. Our numerator is larger than our denominator. A fraction greater than 1 has a numerator that is greater than its denominator. So this is a fraction greater than 1. 5 is greater than 4. We can write a whole number that represents how many circles there are. And we can write a fraction greater than 1 that represents the same amount. Here we have one whole circle and another whole circle. So there are two whole circles. Each whole is divided into four equal parts. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And there are four in each, so we have four, five, six, seven, eight fourths. We have eight fourths. We'd write the fraction like this. Eight fourths is equal to.
to two whole. For this one, we have one, two, three whole circles. Each whole is divided into four equal parts, or fourths. And there are four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve fourths. We write the fraction as twelve fourths. Twelve fourths is equal to one, two, three whole circles. If we have 12 in all, and there's 4 in each whole circle, then we have 3 whole circles. Here we have this pink circle. It's a whole circle, and it's not split up at all, is it? It's just one whole equal part. Our numerator would be 1. Our denominator would be 1. We have the same numerator and denominator. The whole thing is equal to one whole. Now we have two whole circles divided into one equal part. There's one whole part here. We have two circles that each have one equal part. Our numerator is a two, our denominator is a one. It's equal to two whole. Now, a fraction greater than one is also called an improper fraction. You're going to hear it called that in middle school. Its numerator is a larger number than its denominator. And keep in mind that I have an image of fraction bars on my Facebook page in the image section that you could copy, paste, and print if you want to use some fraction bars for your homework. When each whole number is divided into one part, the one is the denominator. So if we have one circle that's in one part, we have one. If we have two circles that have one part, we have two whole. If we have a 3 as the numerator and a 1 as the denominator, we have 3 whole. 4 as the numerator with 1 as a denominator, we have 4 whole. And here we have 5 whole. When we divide a whole number into one equal part, nothing happens. It stays the same. The dividend and the quotient are the same amount. 2 divided by 1 is equal to 2. 3 divided by 1 is equal to 3. 4 divided by 1 is equal to 4. A fraction is equal to 1 when the numerator and denominator are the same number. If we have 0 thirds, it means we have 0 out of 3 equal parts, and that's equal to 0. We split a candy bar into 3 parts, but we didn't eat any, so we ate 0 candy bar. When we have the same numerator and denominator, 3 thirds means 3 parts out of 3 equal parts, and that's equal to 1 whole. If we split a candy bar into three equal parts and we ate all three parts, we ate the whole candy bar, didn't we? We can draw a model of the given fraction or the given fraction greater than one. Here we have four halves. It's telling us that a whole thing is split into two parts, but we have four of them. So here we have a whole circle split into two parts. But to have four of them, we would have to draw another circle with two parts, wouldn't we? And the numerator is larger than the denominator, so this is a fraction greater than one. We have four parts of two equal parts. Here we have four-fourths, and that means we have a whole thing split into four parts, and we have all four parts. And the numerator and denominator are the same number, so this fraction is equal to one whole. We just have one circle split into four parts. Now we have a numerator that's a four and a denominator that's a one. This numerator is larger than the denominator, so this is a fraction greater than one, and it's telling us that a whole thing is just in one part, but we have four of them. So if we have a whole thing that's one part, like this, it's got no cuts to it, no lines in it, but we have four of them. So we have four of one equal part. Take a look at these green circles. Each circle is one whole circle. So which of these numbers name the parts that are shaded? We need to mark all that apply. So remember the numerator is how many are shaded or counted, and it looks like in both circles they're all shaded, aren't they? 
And the denominator, the bottom number, is how many equal parts each hole is split into. When we take a look at this whole circle, it's split into four parts. So is this one. So we know our denominator must be a four. So it can't be this one, because that denominator is an eight, isn't it? We count how many parts are shaded. We have four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight parts are shaded, and we know the denominator is supposed to be a four. So we know this is one of the correct answers that apply. We can also see from the picture that we have two whole circles. So the number two for two whole also applies. So remember, you pick one whole object, you count how many it's split into, and that's the denominator, okay? And it's just for one of the whole objects. We're going to talk about fractions of a group next in Lesson 8.7, and keep trying. I'm really proud of you for watching math videos on YouTube. That's a really good thing, and gosh, I'm so proud of you. I hope you have a really good day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.